Hey guys, thanks for joining me again here for the Kansas Flamingo Chef. It is Memorial Day weekend. It's the biggest barbecue weekend of the entire year. And I wanted to do something a little different. So I'm going to smoke a bison brisket. If you've never eaten bison meat, it's so much more flavorful and dense than beef, but it doesn't hardly have any fat in it. So you have to do things a little differently. Now I'm going to cook this on my smoker, on my Pit Boss pellet grill. But there's a few things I gotta do to get ready, so I wanna show you what's involved. So Panther's checking out some of the stuff that you need. I know this is gonna sound really stupid, but to get your grill ready, especially a pellet grill, when you're smoking meat, you're talking 10 to 12 hours of continuous cooking. So there's some things that absolutely have to happen. Number one, you certainly cannot run out of pellets. That would be a huge problem. But even before that, the last thing you want is a flame out or even an explosion. So first things first, get yourself a couple of scrapers and really clean the inside of the grill. I mean scrape everything down, get all that fat out of there. Clean it out with a shop vac. Don't use chemicals, just scrape it. Then wipe everything down really good with a, uh, a soft terry cloth. I like these uh, microfiber shop towels. Now, clean your grates as well and your heat plates. And after you're done cleaning the heat plates, I know this is gonna sound weird, but you're gonna wrap those plates with aluminum foil. Here's why, the drippings that are gonna come off of there that grease is gonna run like crazy and we don't want it to ignite. That would be absolutely disastrous. One other thing, you don't have to do it, but I highly recommend getting yourself some gloves because this is a nasty, messy job. I'm not gonna show you how to clean one. If you wanna watch it, pull up a video on YouTube. There's plenty of people scrubbing down a grill. It's not difficult. It is, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of work. It's a little time consuming, but it's worth the effort. Mine is clean and ready to go, so I wanna show you the next step. So this odd looking large metal thing sitting here is a heat diffuser. If you don't own one, you don't have to, but you can find them on Amazon. I bought this one for like 40 bucks, I think, and it's pretty sturdy. This thing will help to keep the heat well distributed in your grill for extended smoking. You don't have to have one, okay? It's not a necessity, but I'm telling you, it does make a difference and you'll have a better result, especially so you don't have any weird hot spots in your grill while you're smoking. When you're grilling, you don't use this. But how this works, before you put your heat plates back in, you're gonna put this in the grill over the top of your firebox and then put your grates on top, and this will help distribute the heat across the heat grates so you don't get hot spots. The other thing it does is help protect so grease does not drop off the meat during extended periods of cooking time into your firebox and ignite. Very important. So we're gonna use one of these. There's some other tools I've got here that are also important. Now this is Reynolds, but everybody makes this stuff. This is just pink butcher paper. If you've never seen it before, it's just thick, heavy paper. As I open this up, it is slightly pink or rose colored. This stuff is awesome for smoking brisket. Brisket has a tendency to dry out and we don't want that to happen. Now I do want a little crust, but I don't want it burnt. So once I get up to about 130, 140 degrees and cook, then I'm gonna wrap the, the, uh, the whole brisket in the butcher paper and put it back on. But there's another secret to that. It's not a big deal with beef, but with bison, there's no fat in it. So we've gotta add a fat source of some kind before we wrap it up completely and close it and put it back to cook. Now you can use butter, uh, you could use oil, you can use just about whatever you want. Tallow is a very popular choice and that's what I normally would use, but not today. Today, I have the mother of all tallow. 
This is from a company called Fatworks. This is actually bison tallow. The only ingredient in this is rendered bison fat. This stuff is awesome. I mean, you can cook anything in it. A jar of this is gonna run around 20 to $25 if you can find one. If you're gonna cook bison, I highly recommend trying to find some bison tallow. And I can't help myself. Oh God, it smells amazing. It's just fat. But if you cover your bison in this and then put it in the parchment paper, or butcher paper, excuse me, and then put it back on your smoker and let it finish and get to around that 205, it's gonna be nice and moist. It's gonna still have that deep bison flavor without adding something else to it. Now, one other thing about flavor is you do need a dry rub. I never want to cook a brisket without some kind of dry rub. My personal favorite for brisket is one that's actually made in Oklahoma, of all places. This is called Elk Creek Barbecue Company AP Rub. This stuff is incredible. Now, if you're going to use a rub, with, especially with bison, you don't want an overpowering flavor. You don't want a lot of crazy hickory smokiness or barbecuing or all that weird stuff that goes into a lot of rubs. This is pretty simple. Oh, it's mainly just garlic, salt, and pepper, but it just brings out the flavor of bison so well. I even like it just on a bison steak, but I had to go visit the Wichita Barbecue Company in both of these, and it was worth the stop. So we're going to put this in, put our heat plates back on, get our smoker up to 225, get our brisket completely rubbed, and let it scum. And then once it gets to about 130, 140-ish, 150 at the absolute max, we're going to take it off, wrap it, fat it, put, put it, put it back on to finish the 205. I promise you, it's going to be amazing. Good morning. It's time to get started. It's just after 6.30. The sun just came up. Absolutely beautiful out here today. It's about 65 degrees. Going to get up to around 80. Anyway, smokers uh, ready to go. Just reached my temperature, 225. I don't know if you can see inside or not. I'm going to step down a little bit so you can see. But this, I was talking about the aluminum fluid. That will keep the inside ready to go. My heat diffuser is on over the firebox underneath the aluminum. Now it's time to make this the star of the show. So really, this is a pretty simple process. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit so you can see. We're just gonna take our meat rub up that bugs on. And just kinda go crazy with it. Press it in a little bit so it actually goes in a little bit. If you didn't see that stuff hitting me, those are mulberries falling off my neighbor's tree, driving me absolutely insane. In fact, one landed on the brisket. All right, we're ready to go. Now open up the smoker. Grab our brisket. Any fat that we have on this, I want up to start the cook. We'll turn it over later. But this fat membrane, I want up. This is a this is a flat, not a whole brisket. Now, I don't want to put this in the dead center. I want to kind of put it off center a little bit. So we're not in a hot spot. Let it get started. I'm going to run a meat thermometer real quick and take these bullets off first. With your probe, you want to put this in the thickest part of the brisket you can find, which is usually going to be right around the dead center. And just kind of run it through the fat cap into the meat. Plug it 
let it do, a thing, do its thing and forget about it. Now we are gonna check this at least once an hour. Just come out and check it. I'm gonna turn it over at around three to four hour at the most point. And we want that to get to about 150 degrees before we take it off of there to wrap it. So between 130 and 150 is ideal because the perfect cook is gonna be about 205. I'll see you when it's time to do something else. Welcome back, it's been three hours. We're getting ready to take the brisket off, towel it, wrap it, and put it back on. I am currently at 132 degrees, and the smoker is at 207. I've lowered it a little bit just to get a little more smoke and not so much direct heat. So let's go ahead and take the brisket off first. Let you see what we've got going on here. It's firm, but it's still moist. This side's got some impression. Our fat side is pretty well drained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it fat side up, and I've got a cutting board here and my towel. And you can do this with your hands. I mean, if you use gloves, it's fine. And as we break this towel, all I'm going to do is just smear it on here. And you can melt the towel down first if you want to. You don't really need to. sides, then wrap the brisket, put it back on at 200, and let it continue to cook with your probe in it until you get to a finished cook temperature around 205. I'll see you then. Okay, we're racing with the rain. I am literally feeling the first raindrops as I'm standing here, but I got awesome news. We are at the nine hour mark, and my alarm just went off. We're at 2.03, so I'd really like to get 2.05, but I really don't want to be standing here in a downpour, so it's coming off. Let's take a look. So I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but there is a oil line here on the paper. That's where the, the towel is actually soaked the two layers of butcher paper. But the great news is our aluminum foil isn't covered in stuff. And I don't have a flare up. That's why I did it this way. So let's pull this thermometer. I'll go ahead and shut the smoker down. Now if you've never used a pellet grill or if you have and you don't know this rule, when you turn it off the fan's going to keep running so it can cool down. Two things to always remember. Heat up and cool down your pellet grill with the top open because it builds ash in there and that ash is combustible. And the last thing you want to do is set the side of your house on fire because you were in so much of a hurry to get the grill hot for cool. And never unplug it while it's cooling down. You burn out the motor. All right, that said, let's go. Let's open this up. Oh boy. Oh, there is juice just rolling. Oh my goodness, this smells absolutely incredible. Oh wow. Now you can see, since there's no fat in this, that was a four pound brisket and there's not a lot of meat left. That's what I expected. But I'm gonna guarantee that's gonna be incredible. And this juice that's come off of here, I'm gonna reserve. This is gonna make an amazing barbecue sauce. All right, I'm gonna wrap this. I'll show you how to do it. 
uh, and then I'm going to put it away. I'm not going to slice it yet. I'm going to cut off a piece to taste, but I'm not going to slice it up to eat because people aren't going to be here right now. So you're going to need a cutting board or a good solid surface, plastic wrap and aluminum wrap. I know it sounds weird. I ran a barbecue joint. I promise you this is the best way to store it. And then the best way to heat it back up is to put in your oven in this configuration. Don't unwrap it in, at 225 degrees and just let it warm back up. You can do as high as 275, but don't go higher than that because you're going to cook it. You're not going to get the end result that you want. It's not just going to warm. All right, so what we're going to do is just pull our plastic wrap across the board. and take the brisket out of this beautiful juice and lay it on the plastic. Now, normally I'd go ahead and wrap it at this point, but I can't help myself. So we're gonna cut off this little dangler here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's incredible. All right, so just turn this in the plastic. So you get it completely covered with two or three layers of plastic and then cut it off. And set it to the side. And take the little one there. Set it on the aluminum. And just roll the foil over it into two layers. That's it. And then just close this up. Now, I'm going to let that sit and rest for about 20 minutes before I put it in the refrigerator to keep for tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to take this juice off of this paper, put it in a container, and reserve it to make a sauce. This is going to be amazing stuff. I look forward to sharing it with you. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, ask questions, tell me something you want me to cook. If you'd like uh, information on where to find all this stuff that I use, like this Elk Creek uh, shake, for example, the links are going to be in the, the description. So by all means, reach out to these folks. Have an awesome day. Hope you enjoy your Memorial Day weekend.